Jan Ulrich, Big Jan, the Terminator. He once smoked 700 cigarettes in 24 hours. Rohan Dennis allegedly ran over his wife in an unfortunate homicide. But the cyclist who is condemned by the justice system for mistreating his wife was the great sprinter, dancer and publicist of low-quality bicycles, Mario Cipollini. Super Mario always played the gallant where the ladies were concerned, mounting the winner's podium on several occasions dressed in a suit, inviting several of the hostesses to go up with him to the team hotel. And then there was that impressive stage in the 1992 Tour de France, where he jumped alone from the peloton at the start in Brussels. He gained 15 minutes of advantage, only to leave at the halfway point and get on a private jet to have a date with a Basque hostess and invite her to see the 400 suits he had in his dressing room. But not all the ladies in his life were treated so well, especially the one he married and had two daughters with, Sabrina Landucci. At the trial, the wife, who had endured numerous infidelities during Cipollini's doped-up cycling days, argued that the Lion King, Il Rey Leone, had kicked, punched, slapped and even threatened to kill her by pointing a gun at her temple on several occasions. Eleven years after their divorce, the muscular sprinter even grabbed Landucci by the neck in a gym where they had met coincidentally. So, despite his fame, his power, and how well-loved he was among the Italian public, the sprinter who appeared to be nice with his suits and costumes and his affable character became a monster. A monster sentenced to three years in prison for his criminal acts, acts which ruined his image forever. Someone who went a little further and is going to be tried soon in Australia for allegedly killing his wife will be the recently retired cyclist Rohan Dennis, a double world champion who gave the Giro d'Italia to Tau Gegenhardt in 2020 after a very suspicious performance on the Stelvio, a performance that could only be explained via some rich marginal gains typical of the director Dave Brailsford. Months earlier, he had already had his first big controversy when, in the middle of the COVID-19 outbreak, he skipped the Andorran government rules and went training on the roads of the Pyrenean Mountains. And there he videoed himself, telling the politicians to kiss his ass. But far more serious was another controversy. In 2021, it hadn't been linked to him, but now it splashed all over his face as a world time trial champion. There was a news story which went viral about how the Andorran police, instead of searching the homes of YouTubers, arrested an Australian professional cyclist who lived in Andorra and who had mistreated his wife, also an Australian national. She was on a road in La Masana, crying and begging for help. Now that woman could perfectly well have been Melissa Hoskins, a cyclist who was also a former world track champion and who sadly still has her LinkedIn profile open. A profile where she says how proud she is of the former Visma team cyclist and her family life. That's a profile she won't be able to open again since she was run over by her own husband on her first January vacation in over a decade in Adelaide. Dennis driving a pickup truck on December the 30th, 2023 at 8 p.m., i.e. in daylight conditions in the middle of the Southern Hemisphere, ran over his wife Melissa just a few meters from their home and dragged her on for a few more meters. A fatal impact from which she could not survive. Dennis was arrested and will be tried for reckless homicide. He attended his wife's funeral in tears but Melissa's family claim it all stemmed from an argument that had ignited Jonas Vingegaard's former teammate. It's very, very sad to ruin your image like that, especially when they had such plans, plans together to get rich with vineyards, one of the roads to riches chosen by the doped Francesco Moser. Now, someone who won't be making too many future plans, at least in Asian countries, is the Estonian Antomarche Vonti rider, Madis Michels. The new generation of zombies who live glued to their smartphones have reached professional cycling. 
and so it has happened in the case of this sprinter of only twenty years of age, who already had a victory as a professional to his name after beating reputed sprinters like Phil Bauhaus, Mats Pedersen, or Danny Van Poppel in the Tour of Germany 2023, and that in his debut in a World Tour team. Maddis is also triumphant on his social networks, with several viral videos, including this one in which he appears training in his native Estonia, pedalling smoothly on snow in really tough conditions for the sport. Curious, considering that nowadays cyclists don't want to race when a few snowflakes fall, as happened to our beloved little dictator Jonas Vingegaard in O Gran Camino 2023. However, Maddis and his image as a blonde, stocky athlete has been marked by a stupidity typical of these youngsters who want to imitate the antics of clowns like Logan Paul or El Rubius. In his final race of the season, the Chinese Guanxi Tour, the Estonian decided to make another viral video, this time grinning and smiling with slitted eyes while thinking inside Welcome to the Squid Games a totally racist and disrespectful and mocking gesture towards the public that, at that very moment, was feeding him. A gesture that was sanctioned by his own team. They expelled him from the race. A new classic case of the Streisand effect escape. And Marche still has him on the payroll, but they will now be keeping a very close eye on him as a total jerk. Now, a cyclist who was a total jerk for much of his sporting career is the German legend, Jan Ulrich, Der Kaiser. You'll have seen him in the recent documentary he produced. He had no problem admitting that he's been an alcoholic, a cokehead, and a whoremonger during his sporting life, on and off the bikes, on and off the roads as well. In a podcast alongside doped-up soccer player Tony Cruz, the red-headed son of Radithio, had no problem commenting and elaborating on the harmful activities that nearly led to his death on several occasions. The images were very murky, with the 1997 Tour de France winner smoking several cigarettes at once, and then threatening other celebrities with extremely violent attitudes, and being arrested for having choked one of his concubines to within an inch of her life in that filthy, filthy hotel room. Big Yan is lucky to be alive. But, perhaps thanks to him and his ridiculous winter planning, when he was eating even plastic donuts, Lance Armstrong was able to win easily five of his seven Tour de France. Three cheers for the former telecom rider. And perhaps for this reason, Lance today has paid for several of Jan's treatments. He's helped to save his image. And partly also, he's defended his own image. Because, as he rightly said in a documentary, I find it incredible that Eric Zabel or Rolf Aldag, two more dirty dopers, have such a good image in Germany, and yet my whoremonger friend Jan is hated to the core. But this image whitening is costing him dearly in terms of confessions, but Ulrich at least will now be able to pay several of his debts with the money made from the documentaries. My heartfelt congratulations.